before we start, I'd just like to congratulate the other Hall of Famers tonight. I um, was very lucky enough to play with, obviously, Max Hudson, who covered our butts as midfielders uh, countless times. Um, obviously, Lenny uh, was one of the greatest that I've ever played with. And I never got to play with Spider, but thank you, Spider, because when you got traded, we picked up Nick Del Sano in the trade. So, well, thank you for that too. But your contribution to St Kilda um, was also greatly admired. But I'm here to talk about Stephen Milne, the Milne dog. Stephen Milne didn't do it the conventional way. The talented small forward from Knoxfield and the Dandenong Stingrays was overlooked in his draft in his year and played with the Essendon Reserves in the year 2000. It was on that grand final day when they played against St Kilda that Milne dominated and the club was smart enough to put, St to put Milne on their rookie list at the end of 2000. Once he was upgraded to the senior list before the start of the 2001 season, there was no looking back. Eighth on the all-time games played for St Kilda with 275. Fifth all-time goals for the club with 574. And that personal best of those memorable 11 goals against the Brisbane Lions in 2000 at Etihad Stadium. It was a small forward masterclass, Milne. That's they're your words. Two-time All-Australian, four-time club-leading goal kicker, played in three grand finals and two-night premierships. Milne was blessed with a strong lower core, which meant his agility was up there with the best we've ever seen. He made defenders look silly, and he evaded anyone who dared try to tackle him. His natural ability for reading the play meant he would often get in the way of the key forwards, and he used to drive them nuts. But there was no player in the game that's been better at reading the flight of the ball and getting front and square and crumbing off the pack. He was highly skilled on both sides of the body, and his instinctive knack of knowing where the goals were and the way that he could make that footy talk was something that made him so special. While his talent was undeniable, what was often overlooked was how mentally and physically tough Milne was. His resilience and his ability to play through injury meant he only missed about 20 odd games in 13 seasons. Highlighted by an effort in 2008 when he broke his cheekbone over in Perth and he had to drive home with poor Dennis Campbell who had to drive with him and had to listen to Milne he talked the whole way. But he got back and within a matter of days, he played again the very next week. Everyone could only admire his mental strength. Not only because he played on the toughest position on the ground, but the ability to block out the external noise, whether it was the media or the fans who couldn't stand him because he was so damn good. But also underrated was his ability to lift the spirits of our group when everyone else was flat in those winter months and when times were tough. That was the reason that Milne was the heart and soul of the locker room through the footy club in the 2000s. He was the glue that kept the group tight. He was the infectious personality that we were all drawn to. The two-man show between him and Stephen Baker is something that we'll never forget and hopefully reflect on in a few beers after this. And he made going to work enjoyable each and every day, no matter how tough the circumstances were. It's why he was given one of the greatest honours, and I know one of his proudest honours, in being able to lead the team song in the rooms after every hard-fought victory. But to sum up how good Milne is, he actually sits third on the list of the most goals ever kicked by a genuine small forward in the history of the game. And the two names, the two names above him, pretty handy, Lee Matthews and Kevin Bartlett. And even Kevin Bartlett had to play an extra 120 games than Milne to get there. But he was more than just a goal-kicking machine. He played footy the way it should be played. He made it fun. He was entertaining to watch. He played on instinct and he played with passion. He put bums on seats, smiles on faces, and he played for the love of the game and the love of the St Kilda Footy Club. And it's why he's left a lasting legacy on this football club. But hopefully his greatest achievement's still to come. And that might be his son, Tyson, being part of St Kilda's ever second premiership. We're all extremely proud of what Milne was able to do. And we're glad he's finally getting the accolades and recognition he truly deserves. We're now going to take a look at his highlights. Before that, though, someone on the internet recently on YouTube put up a highlights clip of Milne and I got a sent it. It actually goes for three hours, the highlights. It's actually true, three hours. If you want to look it up, if you want to look at the longer version of this, go to YouTube and look up Stephen Milne's highlights. They actually go for three hours. But let's take a short snapshot right now. 
Jason Blake to present the Hall of Famer, the St Kilda Football Club, Stephen Milne. shaking much. Um, thanks Joey, just want to come back and keep talking about me, that was good. Um, yeah, well, um, it's pretty good then, all I'd say. Um, Joey did send me that text uh, about two weeks ago and I've only watched two hours of the whole lot shit, so I've got about an hour to go. Um, normally uh, they put me to sleep, but they were pretty entertaining, so. Um, yeah, pretty uh, special to be up here. Um, First of all, I uh, remember um, walking into uh, my mum and dad's bedroom uh, one afternoon and there was a message on the uh, answering machine and I, I pressed play um, and it was the one and only John Beveridge. Um, I remember it like it was yesterday and he said, would well, you like to come down and train at the St Kilda Footy Club? And I said, hell yeah, brother. Um, <laughs> I was at Essendon the year before that um, and I wasn't going to get a game there because they had Mark McCurry, Heffernan, Blumfield and Moorcroft, um, and the Bombers were going pretty good at the time, and the Saints weren't going that good, which is okay, but, um, but then uh, John uh, asked me to come down, and um, I drove there, and uh, 13 years later, or 14 years later, um, I finished my career, and I'm up here now, so I can't thank you enough, John. Thank you very much. Um, also, to the other inductees, um, three great mates of mine, uh, Spider, um, love like your brother, mate. Um, every time we see each other, it's just like it was yesterday. Um, we still see each other, you know, a few times a year, and you know I love you, mate. So, great speech, tough to follow on, but thanks, Spider and Shagger um, and the crew. I can't believe how old they're getting. So, uh, thank you very much. Um, to Max, uh, great speech, Max. Great speech, Max. Um, if I'm talking fast, does someone tell me to slow down, you? Yeah? Um, Maxie, the heart and soul of the back line. Um, never liked the limelight, but uh, another great speech, speech, Max, and it was a pleasure to play alongside you, mate, so thank you very much. And a Disco Hayes, um, no one knows him as Disco, but only the inner house boys do, so Lenny, uh, congratulations. And as Spider said, looking forward to getting you up here and talking for five minutes, because the only time you talk is after a few beers at Milne, so uh, thank you. Um, how I got up here um, a while ago, I was on the couch, one Thursday afternoon and um, I got a phone call. I didn't answer it because it was a private number or uh, a number I didn't know because I've had a few prank calls over the years. Um, <laughs> so, a couple of death threats, but we'll get going about that. Um, <coughs> um, and it was Ross Smith. So I rang him back straight away and um, he gave me the news that I was gonna be inducted to the Hall of Fame and I literally nearly fell off the couch. Um, he said there'll be a letter in, a in about a week. So after a week come, um, I checked the mailbox, nothing. <laughs> the next day, I checked the mailbox, nothing. The next 10 days, I checked the mailbox, nothing. I thought it was a prank call. I thought, oh, I've been stitched here. And shit, who's got me now? Is it baked, sorta? Someone's got me good. So I was driving along and I said, I need this bloody letter. I don't know if it's a prank call. So I tried to get Ross's number. I rang Lisa Lang, true story. Lisa Lang passed on Ross's number, I rang Ross, he goes, no, relax, the letter's coming, so it came two days later, so it was okay. <laughs> so thanks, Ross, it wasn't a stitch up, but thank you. Um, 
Yeah, obviously on to the thank yous now. Um, I can't thank the St Kilda Footy Club enough. As I said, John, I absolutely love the place. Um, it's been the best 13 years you could ever imagine, playing with your mates, hanging shit on your mates, um, just playing footy and getting paid OK for it. So it was very good. Um, to the staff, I made some really good friends. Um, to late Kenny Whiffen, who I had a lot of banter with every day. I reckon I could get him in the boxing gym. Um, but to Kenny, um, all the guys down there, Dennis Award, um, and to the couple of physios, uh, Andrew Wallace and Chris Bell, who was kind of like my little office, which I didn't get much physio because I was pretty durable. Um, all, these weak, all these weak guys are getting physio and stuff, but to Wall and Belly, I, I miss them days of the physio room and the banter in there. Um, to all the volunteers who uh, do a lot day in, day out, starting from Georgie Day. Um, the stuff you've done for my family, Georgie, is, uh, is immense. So thank you, Georgie, from Mal and I. Um, to all the supporters, um, the best in the league. I do, um, I do miss running down to the cheer squad, getting a bit of dirt, rubbing my hands together and waving to the cheer squad uh, every day. Once I see the boys, Gresh and Loans, uh, run down there, hopefully you pass it on to them. But I do miss waving the cheer squad, g'day, and, um, saying keep cheering, so I do miss you guys, so uh, thanks for the uh, support. Um, I did even meet one supporter about a year ago who's got the tattoo of my whole portrait on the back of his leg. What a crazy bastard, but... Um, <laughs> and he made me sign it underneath. I go, My, you're not right, but that's, um, that's a St Kilda Cheers squad, that's a supporter, so uh, thank you. Um, to all my teammates who I annoyed, played with, um, had fun on and off the fields, on and off the field, um, I had to ring Bakes every day for the last month to get him here today. So um, to Bakes, Lenny, Wool, Troy Schwartz, um, Rue, Cozy Chips, Jimbo, and a couple of the old guys. Um, Aussie Jones, who are, is, he's here today, so thank you. Um, also, Nicky Dell, Neil, and Fraser, and my old mate Hamill. Um, I've uh, been pretty lucky to have a lot of mates over the years, ranging from Spider, who's nearly 50, to... Um, <laughs> to Armour and Gears and all the guys I just mentioned. So I can't thank you for your friendship when we're playing, but especially now. Um, as Spider said, I had five coaches, all very different. Um, but I wouldn't be here tonight if it wasn't for Ross Lyon. Um, I was gonna get the sack or the arse um, at the end of 2007, um, and Ross Lyon offered me a three-year contract, which I really didn't look back. Um, so I can't thank Ross Lyon for everything that he did for me on the field. Um, just getting around me, um, yeah, being like a second father to me, Ross, and still speak to him this day. Even I rang him last week to have a chat with Tyson, and we went down and had a coffee for an hour. So to Ross, I can't thank you enough. Uh, once again, it wasn't true I've got uh, 10 tables here tonight. I've got six, so um, about 60 f close family and friends come. So. I sent a text out and everyone said yes, so I'm pretty happy. So to all my Bumaris boys that are here tonight, thank you. Uh, my Strathfield Say boys, Dasha and all the guys, Alison. Um, during my playing days and then after, um, it's been immense. So your friendship's been amazing. Um, there's been some long conversations um, over one beer or over a few more, um, and they'll continue um, on for long to come. Um, to the squad as well, um, I've got a special squad of friends and their kids, uh, men and girls, they're very special to me, so uh, thank you and their kids. Um, to Pete and Kez, we flew down from Brisbane, um, I have no words to describe our friendship. Once you've sponsored the club, uh, we're best friends. Every time we see each other, um, it's like yesterday, so thank you very much. And to Mal and Jim Balls, the same with you guys. Thank you for your friendship with my wife. Um, to Command 51, my working partner's partner, um, these guys gave me a job after footy. Life after footy is very tough. And I was very lucky enough to meet Sam Saliba and Matt Madden, who gave me a very good opportunity um, working and cleaning toilets, which is sick. Um, <laughs> working for Command 51. I've been there four years now. Um, and life after footy is tough, and I do love cleaning toilets, but I should get the boys to do it. But I can't thank you guys, like two older brothers to me. I can't thank you enough for the last four years and many years to come. So thank you very much, guys. Nearly done. Um, to my parents, Boise and Noel Bronny. Um, the unconditional support. You didn't miss a game. Maybe only a couple of the staters because mum hates flying. Um, 
it's been a roller coaster, Mark, but nights like this really make it special, so it's still going to be a roller coaster because I'm not going to change, but um, I can't thank you enough, Mark, so thank you from all my heart to uh, my parents, so thank you, Mum and Dad. And I can't forget my little brother, Greggy Milne, uh, Greggy Charles, thank you, mate. Um, thanks for uh, letting me beat you up in the backyard and making me a bit tougher um, playing kick to kick, mate. But our friendship, our support, um, your support is uh, immense, mate. So thanks, Greg. His name's Craig, but I call him Greg. Um, uh, nearly done. Tyson and Lola, uh, the two joys of my life. Um, 17, holy shit, that's gone quick. Um, whatever you do, mate, let's do it well and do it with a smile, mate. Life's too short. Mate, life is too short. 13 years, just goes like that. Harv said to me one time, mate, cherish it me only because it does go quick. And I said, bullshit, Harv, it doesn't. But them 13 years, it absolutely flies. So, Tyson, enjoy it. And Lila, I know you got your netball skills for me, Mum. So, I hope you, uh, I hope you go really well, mate. And just keep running a muck because you're, you're a beauty. So, I love you, Dales. <laughs> to my wife's parents, Big Dave and Pauline, many years ago, they let me, uh, let me marry the beautiful... Uh, Beautiful girl, Mel, so I can't thank you enough for letting me marry Mel and for your support because if you didn't let me do that, as Spider said, I probably wouldn't be up here somewhere. I'd be, I'm not sure where I'd be. <laughs> um, last of all, uh, to my wife, Mel, it's, uh, yeah, high school sweethearts. Um, yeah, 10 years married, last New Year's Eve. Um, anyone else would have went running, does. If they met me, anyone else would have went running, they still would have been running, but you stuck fat. And you're still sticking fat. I can't thank you enough. Um, yeah, so thank you. <clears throat> Even though I was the most hated player in the AFL for three years straight, which I loved, <laughs> I got second two years after that, I was a bit pissed off about. But I'm not hated tonight, I can feel the love, so thank you for everyone in the no room tonight. Last of all, I'd just like to let everyone know that it's my birthday tomorrow, I'm 39, so the party's just starting tonight, and there's no after party tonight, might be a little one, the bigger one's tomorrow, so long weekend, so look out to all the playing group in 2019, good luck, Richard and the boys, good luck, and I'm honoured, thank you very much, cheers.